All right. Hello, everybody. This is Ju Julie D from NordoniaHills.News, and welcome to the Business Spotlight. And today we are spotlighting DPS for Life with Joe Panito. Well, that has a great ring to it, Joe. Well, thank you very much, Julie. <laughs> that, that's awesome. It's great to be with you today. Well, thank you for visiting me as well. So we have a lot to talk about with people. Now, for the people in the Nordonia area, um, they may see this face and they're like, I think I know that guy. Yes, I have been around a long time, but most people will know my wife and not me. Um, both of our girls went to Rushwood and then we Eaton, the middle school and, and the high school. And my wife has now for the last 10 years been one of the secretaries in the guidance office at the high school. So when you walk in, and if your child needs a work permit, they're probably talking to my wife at some point. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk about DPS for life. So yeah. DPS uh, stands for developing positive skills for life. It does. It does. That's my, that's my um, doing business as name. The official corporate name is JMJS, which is just a really in-depth search I did for an incorporation. And that's simply the initials of our whole family. So Joe, oh. Mary Beth, my wife, Jennifer, our oldest, and Sarah, our youngest. So that really is pretty cool. Yeah, really complex. So why coaching? And, and well, from what I understand, you didn't like wake up when you were young and start coaching. I did not. You know, I spent, uh, I went to Kent State and I majored in business administration, which means that you pretty much don't know what you want to do. So you throw in business administration and hope for the best. What I wound up with was a 24 year career in commercial insurance, which was awesome. It was a great way to spend a big chunk of my life, but uh, it just, it got to be just a paycheck. And I really found that I got burned out over a period of time. So Pivot 2017 or so, I started becoming interested in speaking and uh, joined a, a local organization, a local club through Toastmasters International. And you know what, Julie, something just clicked. And I said, you know what, here's the next chapter of my life. I'm going to be a speaker and a coach and a trainer and give back um, and um, the rest, the rest is history, as they say. I just kind of did a real pivot and said, okay, my insurance life has just, the door's closed on that. Here's this brand new door, door that's opening up where I can help people uh, and um, really get a lot of fulfillment out of that. Yeah, I think through most of our lives, we are on different paths, you know, and we really can't, I don't think we should stay in one place long, you know, um, I think, you know, maybe after every 10, 20 years, you should look and say, do I still want to be here or how can I evolve? Uh, because we kind of get stuck. And I know that you can also help people get unstuck. That's the whole thing. Yeah. You know, the challenge for us is for any of us is we get something starts holding us back. And part of it's the way we think. So one of the, one of the, uh, taglines, if you will, that I talk about a lot is thinking differently because by, by design, human beings tend to think of why we can't do something versus why we can do something. So thinking differently is a big part of it. Uh, and the program that I put together, um, and it's really pieces of existing programs, but haven't been combined like this before, is called Breaking the Chains. So I do Breaking the Chains as a process for individuals uh, who are seeking to get unstuck, if you will. Um, and then some with some specific, some specific challenges too. With my coaching practice, Julie, I focus on uh, three areas. So one is I work with a organization that provides coaches to various companies and their employees. So I am coaching everywhere from brand new college graduates just entering their careers to mid-level managers to C-suite executives on that side of things in terms of being the best that they can be in those group in those jobs. And then my personal passions are in a couple of areas. One is working with those that um, are dealing with addictive behavior. 
and are in recovery from addictive behavior. Addictive behavior could be anything. It could be substance. It could be alcohol. Um, could be gambling. Could be shopping. Could be, there's a lot of different addictions out there. The other one is adults that are navigating ADHD because I have found as I've been coaching these employees that there is a really consistent um, need for adults that are managing their, their careers and their lives now with ADHD. They may have been through high school and college receiving some additional support and now they're in the workforce trying to navigate ADHD in this new work environment where it's hybrid or remote work. Um, I was never officially diagnosed as ADHD, but I know I have those traits. Um, I know I have those kind of challenges. I've done several assessments online and I'm definitely right there, even though way back when, when I was in school, we were never tested for that. No, no, it was a totally different world back then. And I think um, the reason why it's really helpful to have a, a coach like you is to navigate this new world, because especially for the older community, it's like, things are so different now, it almost seems like everything is upside down. And to have somebody who understands everything that they've been through, help them get to the navigating the new world, so to speak, you know, I think that is definitely um, very helpful. So I can see how you can help many people at many stages of their life. Yeah, yeah, you know what, it's, that's very true. Um, I mean, look at me, I pivoted in my mid fifties to a new career and I'm working with folks that are anywhere from near retirement age with retirement in their, in, clearly in their sights to brand new college graduates, the, the, the Gen Z, if you will, that are, are navigating. They don't have, they don't have the same opportunities we did from the standpoint that um, they may be in a 100% remote environment. So it's a little different to try to build relationships and feel you know, belonging to your new company when you're not physically meeting with everybody every day. Um, well, and the other challenge now, it seems like, you know, when we were growing up, there really wasn't a ton of options like they are now. So it's like, right. it's kind of like when you go to the grocery store, there's like 3 million different types of product, you know, or maybe like toothpaste or whatever. It's like, you know, back in the day, there was just, a small section and it was easy sure. you pick one and go but sure. um and you know sometimes you know the older generation say oh you kids you have like so many options but it's like that makes it even more confusing i don't know why and there's so many people there's more of a spotlight on everybody now like what are you doing you know you go to the family gathering and what are you doing now joey and it's like you know, i don't know i think there's more pressure on kids these days than we had oh absolutely Absolutely, because I think that's a big part of it because there's so many options out there um, that it gets confusing. Uh, when I talk to uh, a lot of clients about career path and what they wanna do when they grow up, so to speak, uh, we start with some very simple things just to get their, um, them engaged and start thinking on a deeper level. Um, part of it can be really, really simple, Julie, one thing that I'm really, I believe in is um, some level of meditation and just being alone with your thoughts because we are so, we are so connected to these things and we feel lost when we don't have them. And when you can actually be quiet and be still and just really think about what you wanna do. And as a coach, that's where my job is to ask those questions to really allow someone to get deep into their their reflections and, and really figure out how they're wired, so to speak, and what they really want to do. Do you help people virtually or, or in person? I do. I do. You know what? I have, um, I have my preferred modes. So number one is face-to-face. -face. I would much rather meet with someone face-to-face -face and have a conversation. If, um, depending on how COVID's going, if they're not comfortable with that, I'll do Zoom sessions and uh, we'll, we'll meet that way. Um, or I can do phone, uh, phone sessions as well. Um, the phone sessions are, quite honestly, they're very effective. They're not one of my favorites because I need to be able to see who I'm working with. And I want everybody who I'm working with to see me too, because there's a lot of stuff that's not said in terms of body language mm -hmm. that you can pick up on as a coach. Yeah, nonverbal communication. 
That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes what you're not saying is more important than what you are saying. Yes, that's true. Um, and, you know, I think um, you talk about those chains that, that are holding us back. It's like, I, I think, you know, businesses have that too. It's like, there's so many people that could use your services. I can see businesses being stuck. The businesses that are maybe been stuck in doing things the old way and they don't want to rent, you know, try the new, the new stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, when let's say a business been around for 30 years, how they conducted business back then was totally different than now. Oh yeah. And then you have somebody who's working for a business, like a corporation, they're in the cubicle and they get stuck because you know, they've gotten as further as they can through the, you know, through the org chart. Um, and they kind of feel like they're stuck there. And they're like, you know, I can see them physically sitting at their desk in chains. Like, I have nowhere to go. Sure. So, sure. You, I mean, who who can't you help? I mean, you're just, I mean, even successful people can always use, I mean, Tony Robbins has, you know, even though he's a coach, he has coaches. Absolutely. Absolutely. So to answer your question, which is a great question, who can't I help? The people that I can't help are the ones who are not committed or ready to make the change because coaching is a two way street. So you've got to the client has to meet me halfway. If they're not committed to making real change to to um, take the actions necessary, then we could have a hundred sessions in a year and it's not gonna make a difference. So, you know, in addiction recovery, they, they talk about the readiness ruler. So the readiness ruler is, you know, what's your commitment level from one to, to 10 based on a number of different questions. So that's kind of when I, when I do an input. So I'll do a free, uh, a free session with someone who's interested because it's a, again, it's a two way street. I need to know if they're ready, if they're going to be committed to what we're trying to do. They also have to know if they like me and there's a level of rapport there and a level of trust there because not every coach is for every client and not every client is for every coach. So, um, so that's a big thing. So, so that level of commitment has to be there. I think you have some slides to show us. I do, as a matter of fact. So let me share those right now. And, and I think this explains your process. It does. It does explain explain part of the process. So, so Julie, the coaching process is really relatively simple. So um, you start with where you are. So for example, and I'm going to put this in there because I'm going to use you as an example because you are coming up on a big anniversary. So <laughs> here's Julie seven years ago trying to figure out where Nardoni Hills News is going to go. And here's Julie today. So for our, for our audience, Julie in October is going to be celebrating seven years of getting information and news that's relevant out to our communities. So with Nordonia News. So congratulations to you and kudos on, on seven years. Thank you. It seems like 10. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's the thing. There's a, there's a gap there between those two, those two Julies, if you will. And it really is either you're trying to reach a goal and you don't know how to get there, or you've got a problem that you can't get rid of, or you haven't figured out how to get rid of. Essentially, in the middle is where you're stuck. And that is where coaching can help you figure out where you're going and help you get there by getting a little bit more clarity on what your goal is and what your options are to overcome that obstacle. Because if you're focused on, if you're focused on the outcome you desire, what you're really passionate about, what you're passionate about doing, you will find your way over, under, around, or through the obstacle. You'll get there. But that's really quite simply, that's that's the coaching process in a nutshell. And what I do with the breaking the chains, Julie, is I, I put it together into a um, a process that includes five steps. So the first one is doing a, a characteristics assessment. One of the things that I'm really, if you, if you talk to me about philosophy, it's all positive psychology. So I don't talk about what you don't have. Let's talk about what you do have. Let's talk about 
those characteristics. All of us, um, I, I love, there's a lot of assessments out there, but I really love the VIA characters assessment. And VIA stands for values in action. It looks at 24 different characteristics because all of us, myself, you, everyone I work with, we have certain qualities that we tend to overuse. So those are called the signature um, characteristics or signature character strengths. Those are the ones that we tend to overuse sometimes. For me, it's humor. I use humor in every way possible, sometimes to my detriment, but- Guilty. <laughs> guilty, yeah. You know, well, you know what? I have, I have this sometimes, if you talk to my wife, I have this challenge sometimes where the mouth engages before the brain and then you can't take those words back. So, because uh, I think it's funny, but it may, it may not everyone thinks it's funny. So, so that's just an example. So the assessment looks at the five signature strengths that may be overused. It looks at the bottom five lesser strengths because it's very important that we call them lesser strengths because they're all strengths. So again, positive psychology, we're not talking about negative things. Those five lesser strengths are the ones that you can focus on to improve that are going to help you be a happier person, be a more productive person, be um, more productive at work, your personal life. And then there's those middle strengths. The rest are in the middle. And again, there's still strengths. So one of the, you know, my clients, sometimes that's a real eye opener to say, wow, so now I understand why I do that because I, I tended to, to focus on that a lot. So that's kind of the, the first um, step is to gain some awareness about how you're wired and why you do the things you do. The, yeah, I think the, a lot of times people focus on what, you know, maybe an issue that they're having. And some of that stems from their upbringing. You know, un unfortunately, sometimes parents, especially back in the day, they didn't really know as much as we know now as parents on what to say and what not to say and what, and what to do, you know, and they'll, you know, I mean, I hear people saying, you know, my mom kept saying, you know, you don't know anything, you'll never go anywhere, you'll never do anything. Oh. And that like stays in their head. And yeah. they think that they're not smart. They think that they can't do these things because that little voice is in their head. And it could be from themselves, not from a parent. They just think that they're not worthy and they're not, um, you know, they don't, they're not going to be able to succeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is, we are a a product of the environment that we grow up in. We all have, you know, some baggage that we carry. I don't think anybody is, you know, comes from a quote unquote perfect family, um, but it's how you deal with that. Now, some, some folks do have some, some very definite trauma in their past, whether it's some type of abuse, maybe it's physical abuse, maybe it's mental abuse, uh, those types of things. You brought up an interesting, an interesting example there because I have had clients where, they'll come in and part of the process, they'll, they'll share that, you know, you know, my, my parent just always referred to me as broken. You know, I'm just, you know, you're broken. We have to try to get you fixed. And it's just heartbreaking when you hear those types of things from, uh, from someone from their past. So, so that, that is the first phase. The, the, the second, third, and fourth steps in the process um, are really the foundational work that, that I'm trained in. I'm trained in something called the empowerment dynamic. And it's really all in how I'm relating to the world and how I'm relating to myself. It all has to do with whether you see yourself as a victim or as a creator. And are you a victim where you don't have any control over your life? You just feel hopeless and helpless? Or are you a, a creator that can see the possibility? So we go through really three basic questions. What are you focused on? How are you relating? And what actions are you taking? So what are you focused on? Very simple. We talked about it before. Are you focused on the challenges, why you can't do something? Or are you focused on what you want and how are you going to get there? That's really the first basic question. The second question, how are you relating? Are, are you seeing yourself as a victim? I have, I deal with, with people that see themselves as victims all the time because maybe it's their boss who is really hard on them. 
Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it is another family member. But there's all these different variations. So you talk about someone being a victim um, and, and shifting to that that creator mentality, where they where they see the possibility, they see the hope, they see how they can relate better to that person who may be persecuting them. Um, you know, we can spend an hour talking about just that because it's all yeah. about moving from the, the drama triangle. Dr. Cartman, Stephen Cartman put together the drama triangle in the 1960s. The empowerment dynamic is really the opposite of that and taking that and turning the triangle right side up and moving forward. Um, and then the what actions are you taking is now that you know what you're trying to get to, what the target is, let's figure out what the next steps are. And what's very important to know about coaching, because coaching is can be um, um, misunderstood. So coaching is that mentoring. When, when you're a coach, you're really not telling people what to do. Because I do have people that come to sessions and they'll say, so what do I need to do? You know, what do you think? What should I, what should I do next? That's not my job. My job is to facilitate the conversation because you have the answers. You just have to figure out what they are in your, in your own mind. So my job is to ask those questions, get you, uh, you know, thinking enough on a deep level to figure out the answers for yourself. So the fifth part of the process for breaking the chains is a, is a coaching engagement. So those first four pieces of the process set the stage. And once you learn, it's all about follow through. That's where look at every January. We all make, we all make New Year's resolutions. And by January 15th, maybe we've, we've totally forgot about them. So it's all about follow through. So that fifth piece to the puzzle is doing either a six month or a 12 month coaching engagement with me, where we do one on one coaching to reinforce what you've learned and how you're applying it in your own life to reach your own goals. And then after that engagement's up, if you want to have, you know, another engagement, if you feel if you feel ready to be on your own, that's awesome. No coach is supposed to have a client for life. That's not being a coach if you have a client for life. The but if you do need some additional support, we'll do another six month engagement. Um, so whatever whatever works for you. But that's that's the breaking the chains process, and I've tailored it for those in addiction recovery. I mean, I do have addic addictive behaviors myself, so I understand what goes on in that process. Um, Are you talking I, about like OCD? Oh, it could, it could be it could be OCD. It could be. <clears throat> It could be anything, anything, you know, what's interesting, Julie, is that's where the ADHD and addictive behaviors tie in together. And that's why I focus on those two areas, because predominantly, or I shouldn't say predominantly, that's the wrong word, but it, folks with ADHD, they, they tend to have um, less control over or less self-control. So those with ADHD have about a 20, 15 to 20% more likelihood of having addictive behavior because they don't have those self-control mechanisms. So that's where they, that's where it ties together um, along with a lot of different things um, that go along with that as well. It's really a holistic approach. Coaching is a holistic approach when, and I'll get back here to the slides in a second, but um, coaching is a holistic approach because as you said before, you know, there's some stuff in our experiences. There may be some trauma in the past. There may be um, something going on currently. And you have to have the proper medical care, whether it's psychiatric, therapist, counselor, whatever, medical professionals to treat kind of what got you to where you are now in terms of PTSD, whatever whatever it is. Mm -hmm. so that's part of the puzzle. The other part of it is that there are certainly many people um, have some type of um, mental disease, mental disorder, OCD, you mentioned, anxiety, bipolar, um, those types of things. If you don't have medical treatment for that, then coaching is not going to work. So it's a holistic approach. Um, ADHD folks, they will always struggle unless they have some type of um, addressing of their ADHD 
Um, I think a lot of people probably don't even know. A lot of them don't know. A lot of them don't know. So then you can't get help if you don't know there's a problem. That's right. That's right. I've actually, no, I've actually had in the past year, a couple of um, clients who actually, you know, always thought kind of like myself and actually went and got tested and turned out that yes, they do have ADHD, got the medication. And then all of a sudden, boom, they kind of took off like a, like a rocket in terms of, of making progress because that was under control. So it's holistic. You know, part of it is looking at the past. Coaching is looking at the future. It's where you are now and how you're going to get to where you want to be. Wow. There's a, there's a lot going on. Um, and I think we're probably getting a lot of people thinking about, about themselves right now and how they move through the world. For example, some people may not realize they have anxiety. They may think that everybody feels like that. Sure. And, you know, everybody is like, whatever their anxiety is, they may think everybody is, is like that. And I think a lot of people do have different forms of anxiety, but some people it's, it's, a uh, um, under a mic, you know, uh, it's under, um, it's magnified, mm-hmm. which is, you know, and it's, who's normal. You know, I always say, I think everybody's a little weird. <laughs> well, you know what? It, well, that's, a, it's, it, that's a great point. So, so first off, that is, you identified probably one of the biggest hurdles for someone to, to wanting to try and get help. And that's the fact that they feel that like they're all by themselves. There, everyone has a challenge. You're not, you are not the only one with ADHD. You are not the only one with addictive behavior. You're not the only one with anxiety. So don't let that hold you back that you feel like you're that stigma that you feel like I'm the only one facing this and that puts you on an island and then you you will most likely get you know worse it'll it'll kind of be a self-fulfilling prophecy so you've got to dig your heels in and say okay so it's not just me so let me let me see what exactly are out there to get me help I always like to say and this goes back to humor and I hope I don't you know offend anybody but you know every family has their own level of dysfunction. There's no family out there that's like the Huxtables or Fathers Knows Best. And hopefully there's no family out there like married with children. We're all somewhere, you know, we're all somewhere in the middle. Exactly. Well, and some, you know, obviously some families, you know, we know are struggling, but other families look great. And the the pictures on Facebook are everybody's beautiful and everybody's doing all these different things, but it's like, you don't really know what's behind the scenes. And I think, like you said, everybody is struggling with something, but some people just make, you know, make it look like um, it's really almost kind of fake in a way that not everything's perfect. And, you know, um, I know social media, it can be a double-edged sword. Absolutely. Social media leads a lot to a lot of anxiety because people are posting their best pictures out there. And it looks like folks have these amazing lives going on and they're in Cancun or they're in whatever. And that was a perfect, you didn't know it, but it was a perfect segue into a little tool that I'll share with your, with your audience. So think about a compass, north, south, east, and west. When we look east and west, think about social media. When we look east and west, that's when we lose focus because we're comparing ourselves to everybody else. Well, Julie has this and Julie went to here and Julie's thinking, well, Joe, we just went on vacation here and I didn't do that, and et cetera. So when we look east and west, we're comparing ourselves to everybody else. And that's when we lose our focus and we get frustrated. We need to focus on north and south. South is where you were, north is where you're headed. So if you think about it and you say, okay, so I'm farther than when I started, so I'm making progress. I'm going, I'm going in the right direction. And it, what's interesting is, is this right here. This is very up here for a specific reason because it's not a straight line. No. You know, we may take three steps forward and then one step back and two steps forward and two steps back. And, but the idea is that you're still moving forward. You're still farther north than where you started. Yeah, sometimes you need to look back a little, see where you, how far you've came, because it seems like we're like stuck and maybe we're making slow progress. And, exactly. you know, maybe there's some things that we can do to accelerate the progress. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to, that's a great segue too. So I'm going to share a quick slide here with a couple of tips for your audience. So 
uh, thinking differently. So here's four things I want to I want to leave you with today. Challenges versus outcomes. It's very it's very simple when you stay focused on those outcomes that you're trying to get and not the challenges, then you'll, you'll figure out a way around the challenges. So focus on what you want. Don't focus on why you can't do something. So that's number one. That's one way to think differently. Okay. Now these are all what I'm going to talk about, Julie, these, these are, these are easy to say mm. they are hard. They're hard to get inside you and live. That's the first one. Yeah. I mean, changing the way you think, I mean, yeah, this is not like, oh, I get it. I got yeah. it. I'm fixed. No, it's going to be uncomfortable at first because we have habits that have that have been built for years. So if you think if you think about a muddy road and you're the 10th car going down that muddy road, there's ruts. So you stay inside that rut because that's the way you can move forward. Well, those are our habits. That's the way we think. And when you start thinking differently, and try and get out of that rut. It's uncomfortable. It's hard to get out of that rut. It takes practice. So thinking differently, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, the second one is assume positive intent. And the, the point of that is all of us will get emotional about feedback or something that we're getting. Uh, maybe it's the teacher, you know, maybe it's, you know, our boss, maybe it's whatever, a family member. The idea of assume positive intent is to try to control your emotions. Don't get upset because you heard something that was constructive. And I say constructive specifically because we're not talking about negative things. It's not negative feedback, it's constructive feedback. So when you talk about assume positive intent, it's okay. So let me take a second and think about this. On the surface is what I was told correct. Yeah, I do need to, I do need to fix that. Maybe it wasn't said in the right way. Maybe I got upset in the, in the moment, but what was given to me as what I need to work on was accurate. So I'm just going to assume the positive intent, worry about what I need to do and not worry about how it was told to me. Well, sometimes they hit a nerve and we just react. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I hate to, I hate to use the word triggered because it's, it's used a lot you know, mm -hmm. these days, but there are certain things that will trigger us. And, you know, I talk to a lot of employees that are triggered by their, their bosses all the time with, with feedback is, you know, the interesting thing about managers, managers, by and large, painting with a very broad paintbrush, managers, by and large, um, got there because of their accomplishments, and they've never been trained to manage people. So most times they're, they struggle with how to manage people. Yeah, I can see them after a meeting going, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> right, Exactly. Exactly. And that is, so I'm going to add another technique. So when I talk to folks that are doing performance reviews, some you know, managers that are getting ready to do semi-annual or, or annual reviews with their direct reports, I'll always talk to them about the view from the balcony. So when you think about it, pretend that you're in the audience. So Julie is in the audience at Playhouse Square. And then Julie the company owner manager is on stage giving your employee um, their review. Think about the conversation and rehearse it in your mind. And if you do it from the audience, you'll pick up on some of those things, Julie, like you just said, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Because, wow, you know, if I was on the receiving end of that, I'd be angry. So I need to change how I word that. And right. And better. So the view from the balcony. The other one, which is really great when, I'm talking to people that are going through um, life changes or wanting to make a difference, um, make a, a change in their life, a permanent change is very simple. Stop, start, and continue. We'll start with a basic list of, okay, go back and reflect on this. What do you, if you want to make change in your life, if you want to get to that next level, what do you need to stop doing? What do you need to start doing? And what's working that you should continue doing? It sounds simple. But when you start doing that exercise, it's like, wow, you know, I really need, I, I keep falling into that, that rut and I keep doing the same thing over and over. That's got to stop. So yeah, so if you keep doing the same thing, then you're going to get the same results. Exactly. Exactly. So that's, so that's a good one. And then the last one is um, control, influence, and accept. I always call it CIA and it's not the spy agency that, you know, 
keeps track of everybody, but it's controlled. No, that's Alexa. <laughs> that's Alexa. Exactly. That's Alexa or Siri. Yes. It's scary what they know. So control, influence, and accept. In any situation, there's a portion of that situation, whether it's personal life or professional, that you can't do anything about. So that falls in the accept column. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to get upset about it because I can't do anything about it. They changed the procedure at work. They changed whatever. I can't do anything about that from where I sit. So the control means, okay, control your emotions, control how you respond to that. And then the influence is, okay, you may not be able to deal with it right now, but how can you influence change in the future? Maybe it is being more active in a certain organization at work. Maybe it's being more active in um, a community project that you're passionate about. But think about the ways that you can influence things um, and not be focused on being angry and frustrated because of something you can't change. Right, yeah. like, you know, in the political world, there are, you know, things exactly. happening and we don't, but we can actually, you know, start um, volunteering in our community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great example. So control, influence, and accept. So those are, um, those are, in addition to the view from the balcony, those are some great things to, to think about and figure out how you can start applying those in, in your life. I went through those real quick because I know we've got limited time today, but um, I thought, let me, let me give your audience um, just a little taste of some things that they may be able to apply. Well, yeah, it gives them a taste and they want to, to know more from you. Well, that's <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that, that is true. So what I put on the screen now is my contact information. So it's real simple. Uh, I had a couple of clients that used to refer to me when they would get on session and say, hey, it's good to talk to Coach Joe today, or I've been looking forward to talking to Coach Joe. So I said, you know what? Coach Joe is a good moniker. I'm going to take that. So yeah. my email is just coachjoe at dpsforlife.com. Um, the website's there, and then my phone number, 330-815-7015. Um, so, you know, reach out, give me a call. I will tell you that if you call the phone number and you get a voicemail, it's because I'm most likely in session with another client. So just leave a voicemail and I'll, and I'll get back to you. Or at an Ordonia sport game. <laughs> I may, yeah, you know what? I, you may, you may see me at the stadium. You know, the, the nights are four and oh right now. So I know. Beautiful thing. And, you know, look at all the challenges that they've come through. So, you know, and they're being successful Absolutely. right now and it's, it's the beginning of a season. It's everybody's just trying to figure out, you know, their place on the team. I think to come out, you know, um, four and zero is really difficult to do. Absolutely, yeah, especially after you know the teams that they've been playing. So, yeah. I mean, and you, you and I go back from a personal level because both of our girls graduated together in seventeen, and they were both part of a Nerdonia marching band. So we, as band parents, we went to a lot of games and saw some great football. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I talk about football a lot on my show and um and you know, obviously we cover it a lot. And I explained the other day, I really think one of the things that's wonderful about faith uh about football and in high school, it involves so many students. It's yeah. not just the team, you know, it's the band, you know, the color guard. Um there in this even the student section is a part of the game too. Absolutely. And it's it's you come to the games and like it seems like everybody in the community is there and okay. and and it's like obviously there's not as many students involved in soccer and some of the other um sports so i don't i don't think it's just the fact that everybody loves football i think there's just so many moving parts and you know <laughs> when the band's done doing the halftime show a lot of the audience goes so that shows you a lot of the audience are <laughs> band parents and band family so it's not just yeah. The players on the field. What was that? Uh, the band parents used to have something on their shirt. It was so funny. Like, I can't remember what it was, but you know, the fact that, you know, they're not there for the football, they're for the I like, do remember that. Yeah, it was I something know. about the halftime was yeah. the best part of the of the game oh, or whatever. It was something like that because <laughs> I, I do remember that. I thought it was great. Now I can't I haven't thought about that for a while. You I know. know. <laughs> the Lancer marching band. It was um it was cool. But you know what, to your point. You have that because especially after COVID, because that's an opportunity to get reconnected. 
and right. and to see people after after lockdowns and whatnot because we're, you know we're not designed to be isolated we we need that we need that interaction so it's it's great to have those ball games and and different events to go to and support the schools too it's well, it's a great school system oh absolutely we should um also let everybody know that you're going to be doing some uh, videos in our speaker series. I am, yes. And one of the next ones we're going to do, um, Julie, is there's a, a young lady that I've been working with and she's on her um, journey in recovery. She and I are writing a book together that should be out by the end of the year. So our next video, you'll be talking to both of us. So stay tuned for that. I am. I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure other people will as well. Well, we have learned a lot today and we all have a lot to think about. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. We all do. You know what? It's every day is a great day. So um, it's just how you how you view it and what you make out of it. Well, you know, we really appreciate your journey and getting to a point now where you can help more people because people definitely <laughs> need this in their lives, Joe. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was definitely a victim for a long time. I was diagnosed with a chronic illness. And that was another part of how I got to where I am today, because I was diagnosed with a chronic illness that's not going away. So I had to deal with getting over being the victim and, and figuring out how I was going to live going forward. So and here I am. Yeah, you're like uh, coming out of the ashes, you know, I, I mean, sometimes uh, things happen for a reason. Yeah, everything happens. Yeah, I think uh, I firmly believe everything happens for a reason. And it's in its own time. So, Julie, it has been great spending time with you today. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. And, you know, thanks to our uh, viewers today. And um, I hope we've helped somebody. And, you know, I, I think people are going to see Joe on the street now and say, hey, I know. I know what he does now. I, you know, I hope that. I hope when I'm at Giant Eagle or Panera, somebody stops by and says hi. That would be awesome. And you're uh, also in our community video that's coming out soon. So I am. I am. It was very <laughs> people can look for you in that. That's right. It was very gracious of you to, to offer me that opportunity. So yes, I do have a little tiny part in that video. Yeah, well, you know, there's so many things going on in the video. Don't blink because you'll miss something. <laughs> or you'll just have to rewatch <laughs> it again. <laughs> just keep watching it. Exactly. Well, thank you for everything, Joe, and more to come. Thank you very much, Julie. Have thank a great you. Day. Bye. Yeah. Bye.